Hello there, Lisa here. I have a really fun, quick, simple, easy project share for you today. This is actually a double envelope. It's super simple once you know how and really easy to construct once you have all of the measurements. I actually saw this on Instagram and it was one of those things where they, uh, you know, crammed the video at hyper speed and the way this was demonstrated was incredibly difficult to follow and it was just really hard. So I've simplified the process and made it super simple for you. So when you open it up, I've decorated the front here. It's got a little pocket made out of a torn piece of paper, a couple little tags in there. And then there are a couple of envelope pockets here. So there's a pocket here and there's a pocket here. And again, this is made out of one sheet of paper. So it's really easy to do. And the thing I really liked about it is when you're using digital kits, you kind of always end up with these little bits and pieces left over, and sometimes they can be a little difficult to use up. So this is the perfect size to use up all of those little bits and pieces. So let me show you an undecorated one. This is what it looks like once it's folded and put together without all the froof on it. So there's a pocket here, and there's a pocket here. And again, it's made out of a single sheet of paper. So you're gonna need just some basic tools for this, scoreboard, paper trimmer, ruler, pencil, scissors, really really simple to do so scoreboard and I'm going to start with a piece of hand dyed uh, printer paper copy paper whatever you want to call it I personally have stepped up to the 24 pound paper it's got um, a much better weight to it and it's not quite as fragile as the really inexpensive 20 pound stuff is so let's start on the 11 inch side so we're going to make two score lines here. We're going to score it three and five eighths, three and five eighths, five eighths is the blue tick mark right after the half. And then we're going to score it seven and a quarter, seven and a quarter. You could use pattern paper for this. If you wanted to just cut it into eight and a half by 11 and you're good to go. We're going to turn this and we're going to score on this left hand side at a quarter of an inch. If you are using patterned paper that is directional, this quarter inch score line we're going to make right here is the bottom of your little envelope, the way that it gets put together. So that little quarter inch score line is right down here at the bottom. So we're going to score this at a quarter inch. I know that's tight, but that's what we're going to do. Quarter of an inch. Make sure that it's still up against your rail, nice and tight, and it's not drifting. Three and a quarter three and a quarter and six and a quarter, six and a quarter. Now I'm going to flip this piece of paper bottom to top so that my score lines still line up and I'm just going to score that paper again. I just want to make sure that I'm going to get some really nice crisp folds and sometimes thinner paper doesn't uh, fold as well as cardstock does. So I'm just rescoring those score lines. Okay, with your paper back with the quarter inch, the quarter inch space up here at the left, we're going to score at three inches and you're going to only go up to the score line that we created right here. There's a score line running right here. So you're gonna score at three and you're gonna go up to that line and stop. And we're going to go down to this line down here, the score line that we created here. And I have my ruler on here, so it tells me where the three is, and I'm going to score. So hopefully you can see that little space in there. And there's one here. And it just goes right up to this score line here and up to this score line here. That's all the scoring that we're going to do. Now the bits and bits that we're going to cut, I prefer to use my paper trimmer. Feel free to use your scissors, either way works. So I'm gonna take just a second and I'm gonna put some pencil lines on here so that you can actually see what we're doing just a little bit better. So that's where we scored at three and five eighths and seven and a quarter. We scored this at three and a quarter and six and a quarter. And then we went back to here and scored it at three up to that score line and then three to here 
And then we've got that quarter inch score line over here on this side. This is what your piece of paper should look like. We're going to, on the 11 inch side, on the 11 inch side, we're going to remove this piece here and this piece here. On this right hand side, we're going to remove this here and we're going to remove this here. So we're going to keep this little bit here. We're going to keep this little bit here. We're going to remove this, remove this, and remove this. So your paper trimmer or your scissors, whichever you're more comfortable with. Like I said, I prefer my paper trimmer. I'm going to start by putting a little V right here at the bottom. I want to keep this. We need that tab to make the bottom part of the envelope, but we're going to remove this little part here. Now by putting that little V in there, when I put this on my paper trimmer, I'm going to start cutting at this end and my blade's going to stop when it gets to that V. So I'm going to start with that first because it's the smallest section to remove. Making sure that the edge of my paper is also on the quarter inch mark on my paper trimmer. And I'm just going to slide that till I get to the V. So I've got a nice straight cut right there. I'm going to leave it right here and I'm going to scooch it over to that line we made at the three inch mark. And I'm going to line up that line with the ditch of my trimmer. I'm going to start with my blade up here and I'm going to go just underneath it and pull down and cut. I'm going to slide this over to the next pencil line that I have right here. And I'm going to slide my blade up to this line right here and I'm going to stop. And I'm going to stop short of it so they don't go over that. I'm going to go over a little bit further to this next pencil line and I'm going to cut here so that I can get this removed. And I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to pick up my blade. I'm going to go just to the other side of this pencil line here. I'm going to push that blade down in and cut. I'm going to rotate my paper and remove this part that has the X on it. Going just up to this pencil mark with my blade. I'm going to scooch this over and do the same thing over here. Lining up my score line and my pencil line with the ditch of my trimmer, making sure that everything is square and cut. So the only thing we have left is this one here. So we're going to cut on this line right here. This is where we started. We're going to remove this one and we're going to create a tab just like this one here at the bottom. So we're going to keep this section. So we want to cut underneath it so we don't cut it off. So again, lining it up with my ditch of my trimmer, I'm going to slide until I get to just shy of there and stop. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this bit here. And you can get a better straight cut on that once this is folded. And on this side, I want to cut that at an angle up into the corner. And then I'm going to remove that little tiny triangle right there. So that's going to make our tab for the bottom of this pocket. I am going to cut this at an angle here and cut this one at an angle here. So, so far that's what you should have. Really simple so far, right? Next you're going to need your ruler and a pencil. I'm going to mark half an inch up from this bottom corner right here on the outer edge of this. I'm just going to make a, a tick mark at a half an inch. I'm going to do the same thing with down here, half an inch. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side, but I need to measure from this upper pencil line, not the tab, but this pencil line, this upper pencil line here and the upper pencil line here. 
So I'm just gonna mark half an inch. Your tick marks are not going to show. They're gonna be folded to the inside of the envelope so you're not going to see them. And a half an inch here. Now you can do the following step with your scissors if you choose to. I prefer my ruler and a cutting blade. Uh, gosh, where is it? Here it is. So this is the orientation that we started with. We're going to cut from this corner to that pencil tick mark you made, from this corner to that pencil mark right there. So I'm just going to lay the metal edge of my ruler right there and cut. Do the same thing here. Pencil tick mark right in the corner and cut. You can just throw these pieces away. And if you didn't get that little tab right there cut real well, really nicely, right here is where you can fix it. It's hard to get in there with a pair of scissors right there. We're going to do exactly the same thing on this side. And since I'm right-handed, I'm going to turn it around. And from the corner to your pencil mark, cut. Same thing here and cut. Once you've done this a couple of times, they go really fast. I've made about a dozen of them this morning. So before I do anything else, I'm going to fold on those score lines that we made, and I wanna make sure that my edges line up here at the bottom. Same thing here. I wanna make sure it lines up nice and straight. And these pieces, fold them over. You can fold in your little tab here at the bottom and fold in this little tab here as well. We're going to fold it over, make sure it lines up nicely with the bottom here. And same for this one. Can you see how it's going to come together now? So, and then if anything else needs to be uh, trimmed, now's the time to do it. If it's not quite all straight, I think the way that you're only going to get absolute precision here is if you were to use your ruler and your blade and cut every single thing with your ruler and your blade. But using my paper trimmer, I get really close. So there it is. And you're going to want to ink anything that you're going to ink right now. It's easier to do it now. So these pieces right here, once you crisscross these, it's really a bugger to get those inked. So that's the only part I'm going to do right this second because everything else I can get after it's been glued. So these two sides go down first. That creates the bottom of the envelope. And what we don't want to do is get it hung up here when it folds over. So we're going to snip this just a little tiny bit. Just take off an eighth of an inch or so. Again, you're not going to see it. And then grab your wet glue. You could use uh, eighth inch score tape if you have it here. But we're just using, you know, copy paper. So glue works just fine. So no smashing. Just let it grab. And then fold the other one over right on top of it. Another one here. And then this one goes over on top. Nope, oh, I didn't get that one all the way straight. You want to make sure that they're straight. So I've got a little bit of an overhang right here. I'm not sure where how that happened. That's all right. So there's your two pockets. How simple was that? Up here at the top, this is your top envelope flap. Just go ahead and use your corner rounder or maybe you've got a special corner punch that would make a decorative punch. That's a good idea. Oh, let me grab one. So how cute is that? Super cute and really, really simple, really easy to do. 
So if you have your basic, you know, 12 by 12 scrapbook paper, you can um, just cut it down to eight and a half by 11 and use the measurements that I've given you. And you will come up with this super cutie little envelope. So from here, you can decorate it any way you want, do whatever you want to do with it. And uh, I used an eyelet and a round punch here at the top. Now that we're all inked up, I just used a round punch for the little circles. And I actually kind of like the size of the three quarter, the three quarter inch punch. So one, two, and of course you could make these completely decorative. Um, and two of them, two pieces of cardstock together is a nice thickness for your string to go around. So I put two of those together and feel free to use whatever. And I've got some music note paper laying here. So how about if we put um, some music notes on the top of that wrong punch. So let's do that. We'll just put that right on top there. And then you can grab an eyelet or a brad, whatever works best for you. It isn't really going to make any difference, but whatever you like the look of, maybe you want to make a couple of them so you can decide what you like the look of. I'm going to use a copper eyelet because I never use the copper ones and I'd like to get rid of them. So you do not want to glue this down. You just want to center it ishness. Grab your crocodile. Punch your hole, grab your eyelet, and I am using the copper eyelet. Give it a munch, and now you can go ahead and tie your string around it. The original one I did, I put a button on the end of the string so that it's a little bit easier to grab a hold of. I'm finding that as I get older, my finger dexterity is getting a little bit it's a little harder sometimes to grab really tiny things. So I find it's easier to grab a hold of something like a button. I used leftover bits, like I said, from a digital kit that I had downloaded. And this is a B kit. And I think, I think it was from My Porch Prints, I think, or Artie Mays, one of the two. But you can use whatever, just use whatever. So you can decorate them up or you can leave them totally plain, completely up to you. So there you have it. Um, let me know what you think. And I'm going to sit down and make a whole bunch more of these while I'm watching a little TV today. And I hope you have a go at it as well. And I'd love to see yours after you get done making some.